three. Yes! Here's quick release three. Got it! And it's good! Tonight we wrap up the calendar year with our first look at the Durfee Hilltoppers in boys basketball as Coach Bill Shea brings his Conley Cougars to the Fieldhouse. Hello again everybody, I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to Durfee. Welcome to my broadcast partner Jay Correa who's joining me tonight. Jay, you came to a lot of games last year. Basically every game that I was at, you were here. So you're up on the team. You know, Durfee lost some key guys in the offseason due to graduation, but there were guys that were playmakers last year that now have to step up into that leadership role. Yeah, that's just it for Coach DeCruz, right? We know this is a heated rivalry, right? Anytime you talk about an in-city rivalry, we're talking cross-the-street rivalry, right? The Battle of Ellsbury Street. Conley, Coach Shea, you know, coming in here into the field house, legendary games here, you know, you can just feel the, the excitement every time you walk in here. Durfee's going to give it its best, you know, they're coming in one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one -on -one, both teams one-on-one, -on -one, even records, right? And Coach DeCruz knows he's got to kind of, you know, balance out the veteran leadership that he brings in with, with a new roster. I had a chance to speak with Coach DeCruz at practice last week, and he mentioned about that, talking about what guys who maybe weren't playmakers last year have to do to try to help shield the guys who are going to take over for a Jay Lou and a Javon Holly. So let's hear from Coach now. It's tough to replace a Javon Hawley, uh, obviously 1,000-point scorer. It's tough to replace a Jay Lou with his defense and such. But I think the core that's come back that you mentioned, um, they know the expectation because they were part of it last year. They played significant roles. So they're going to be asked a little bit more this year. And I think a lot of guys that came up from the JV level, they know the expectation as well. And I think, you know, it's early on, obviously, we're just starting with practices and such. Um, but I feel like it's a tight-knit group. They all play with each other, so they know what the expectation is. And I think that's the key point to what we're going to do with our success. So, Jay, on the other side, you mentioned that, you know, Coach Shea back at the helm, of course, with the Cougars, been there for many years, going back to when my dad was at Conley. So he's known Coach Shea as a player and as a coach. I've known Bill for a long time as well. Um, he knows what basketball is about here in the city. It's a smaller program than Durfee, but, man, they always come ready to play. Absolutely. Coach Shea has a lot of talent. You know, Durfee's going to hone in on Stevenson and Krinicky, right? We know if these two guys can put up 40 to 50 together along with all the other talents Conley has, it could be a ball game. But Durfee's going to counter, you know, they've got their fair share and, and so much talent. Again, uh, I expect a great game and, and we'll see how it goes. All right, folks, we got live coverage coming up right after the break, our third and final broadcast of the week as we close out the 2022 calendar year. Join us. Stay with us right after the break. Tis the season of giving. The Fall River Traffic Department is giving you a discount through the annual ticket amnesty program. Starting December 1st, all late fees will be waived if you pay off your unpaid parking tickets during this five week grace period, which ends January 6th. You may pay your balance in person with cash, money order, or credit card. No appointment is necessary. Or for contactless payment via money order, just call 508-324-2577 with your plate number handy to find out how much you owe. A secure drop-off box is available at the 3rd Street Government Center entrance. No personal checks will be accepted. Director of Traffic and Parking, Laura Ferreira, wants to remind everyone that having unpaid parking tickets will prevent you from renewing your driver's license and vehicle registration. Be sure to take advantage of this holiday gift from the Fall River Traffic Department. The Christmas season is really the season that sort of allows us to survive throughout the winter. You know, what we make during the Christmas holiday is what pays for the heat to stay on, the electricity to stay on um, while we're closed for winter months. And you know, particularly for a nonprofit, um, with everything that had happened with COVID and being closed for safety purposes, you know, we didn't have that revenue coming in. We didn't have people shopping. We didn't have people going through the museum. Um, and so it's really important to get back out there and show people, you know, hey, we're still here. We're still alive. You know, we need all the help we can get. And thankfully, um, whether it be through foundations or grants or just generous you know, donors, um, we've been able to you know, survive throughout this um, and, and be okay.
we've expanded our Fall River line. So we have um, wine glasses, beer glasses, uh, wine stoppers, magnets, um, you know, a whole array of tea towels for Christmas as well as, you know, everyday tea towels. Um, you know, things that you can have as a little souvenir, you know, to send your loved one who doesn't live in Fall River anymore or, you know, to take if you're traveling during the holidays and you stop by, you know, a little souvenir just to take home. Hello, my name is Laura Ferreira, the Director of Traffic and Parking. During a snowstorm, your safety is our first priority. At times, a parking ban may be necessary to ensure access for emergency vehicles and to allow plows to clear streets. A general rule is park on the side of the street opposite the fire hydrant. For more information, please visit our website at www.fallriverma.org and search parking ban. In addition, you may call the mayor's office at 508-324 2600 or the Office of Traffic and Parking at 508-324-2123. New England weather can be unpredictable. Notification of a parking ban will be made early to give residents the opportunity to move their vehicles. Thank you for your assistance and cooperation. Let's play some ball. Welcome back, everybody, to the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud and Jay Correa with you on this Friday evening, Friday, December 16th. Where has the time gone? We are wrapping up 2022, the calendar year. And, uh, man, we've seen a lot since last January. We've seen some great moments here on Fred TV. And here we are finishing off with uh, the Ellsbury Street Battle between the Cougars and the Hilltoppers. Both teams at one and one. Jay, you mentioned that in the open. Uh, Conley winners against uh, Diamond to open the season at home. Losers against DR. Durfee winners here at home against East Boston. And then losers on the road against Somerset. So both teams have understood what it's like to win and lose here at the start. Yeah, looking for Durfee to get out to a quick start here. Even match, rubber match. Let's play some ball. Hilltoppers with possession to get it started. Great crowd here on a Friday night. Nice to see the gym full. First shot taken off the rim. The rebound attempt from Montia, no good. You see right there on your screen, a lot of students in the house. The six man well represented here at Durfee on the home fan side of the bleachers. Jay, why don't you take uh, the starters for us for the visiting Cougars, our starting five for Bishop Conley. Sure, starting five, freshman number zero, Jameer Stevenson. Number 22, sophomore, Alex Krinicky. Number three, sophomore, Jaden Souza. Senior, number 30, Brandon DeFaria. And also a senior, number 10, Avery Dinham. And that rounds out the status for the Cougars. Of course, Biz Bill Shea back at the helm for the Cougars. Nice. Put up there, up and in, Jaleel Simmons opens the scoring tonight. For the Hilltoppers, they're starting five. Number two, Devontae Stewart. Number three, Jaden Espinal. Number five, Eric Lucas. Number 22, Alexis Montia. And number 23, Jaleel Simmons, who, as I said, just got things started. Good attempt there on the rebound for Durfee, but it is Tafari who comes away with it, but then steps out of bounds. Yeah, so look for Durfee to you know, kind of push the uh, push the play a little bit here. 
jump out to an early first quarter lead. And you know, I like the way they attack the, the hoop. First time down, right to the hole. Break through this defense. There's Tay up and in. Design play right there as the Hilltoppers passing the ball well. Stewart cheating down low. You know, we saw on Tuesday the girls for the first time this season and um, you know, really got out to a fast start, and that was the key to their win against Somerset. And I would have to say, you know, the same thing here. Durfee needs to get out to a quick start, get on the board early, get a lead, and play with a lead. You know, yeah. they played from behind at Somerset, and you know, according to Coach DeCruz, you know, that really was their Achilles heel because they were able to make a run at the end. They only lost by five. They were down 21 to six. Right. In the early going. So, I mean, you can't dig that kind of a hole and expect to, you know, come out on the winning end of it. And what? Evan, <laughs> you know, Evan, you know as well as I do, momentum is, is, is key in any game. But here, that, that adrenaline rush, you know, I mean, these kids know each other well from AAU ball to oh, yeah. rec ball. And, you know, that, that Durfee Conley rivalry where you're literally just taking, you know, a few paces across Ellsbury <laughs> Street, right? So it, it's, it's that kind of night here filled with anticipation, and, and we'll see where, where this all goes. But uh, here we are, quick start, 4-2, to two, two minutes in. Lucas picked up the first foul of the game. Here comes foul number two. Two free throws there from Jameer Stevenson for Conley, and now it uh, looks like Stewart's going to go to the line for the Hilltoppers as the Cougars commit the first violation. It is Stevenson, and Stewart will take two. And that one will dribble out. A little back iron there. Reset. One left. Now quickly the years pile up, you know, for Joe DeCruz. Then now a number of seasons as the head coach. Oh, the rebound. Montia was trying to get it back up there. Had a tough look. Was almost behind the glass. And it rolled right off the rim. But, you know, Joe was uh, here as a freshman coach when Jamison Guimon was the head coach and, uh, you know, kind of followed that freshman class through to varsity when he took over. A three ball, far side from Espinal. Nothing but twine on that one. Oh, got away with a step there. He did. Good pressure from Durfee playing back. We saw the press a lot from the Lady Hilltoppers on Tuesday as well. Typical from a Jeff Karen coached defense. Well, that was close to travel as well. Long three, it's good from Stevenson. Way outside. Conley right back in it early, seven to five. Five eighteen to go here in the first quarter. Break this press. Cross the stripe pretty easy, but they right, yeah, they got him. They got him. Great sportsmanship there. I like when both teams pick up the play with the you know the foul. That's I sure. like that. That's that's a big part of the game. Teach them something. And that ends up on Stevenson. So two quick fouls for for Jameer in big, the earlier goings. Big problem there, you know. He's <laughs> it could big, be big contributor. He's got to watch that. We just saw. It. I mean, that three he just knocked down was from about college range, if and then some. Good pass outside. Going back to Espinal wants another. Got Ooh. another. We are seeing the scoreboard light up quick tonight. <laughs> oh. Early long balls for both sides, and the Hilltoppers playing the press here early again. Got to get back now. Three from the far corner. Goes hard off the rim and up on top of the glass. That's out of bounds. And a timeout, early timeout for Coach Bill Shea and his Cougars. That's their first, and it comes here just about a little more than halfway through, a little less than halfway through, I should say, this first quarter. Yeah. But, yeah, those, uh, those, I like it so far. I do it's too. good, the, back and forth. Those over the backboard shots don't count unless you're playing horse and those crazy shots in your backyard, Evan, the ones yeah. I could never hit. <laughs> yeah, that, same here. There's a, I said it before, I'll say it again. There's a reason I'm wearing the headset, you know. <laughs> I'm not down on the court. I like the seats up here in the bleachers. You know, Evan, we were talking about this early on when we opened. Uh, it's good to see a, a lively crowd here. It's good to see the, you know, the field house packing them in here at, Thomas uh, Skip Karen basketball court. And you know, yeah. Friday night here we are in December, and, and you said it best. You get a lot of students coming back from college. You get a lot of students maybe just, you know, almost like sort of a homecoming for them, right? Coming it is. in. It's, it's very much an alumni game, and you know, it's always like the first opportunity you have to see kids that have been at college 
to see them back here because uh, you know football's tough. You get a couple long weekends, but you don't. They're not always back in time for a Friday night football game. So this is really it when they're all getting back from college. Um, so already seen quite a few familiar faces, which is which is nice. That one deflected and out of bounds. So Lucas will inbound again. They go to Espinal and now Lucas with it back. Wait for the call here. What do we got? Foul away from the ball, down low. Third team foul on hmm. Conley early on. On 24, no. It was the shot clock. Shot clock was wrong. They didn't reset it for the oh, okay, half court yep. inbound. That's what it was. There's no 24 on Conley's lineup. <laughs> Three again. Oh, good block down low, but again, the third chance. Dinham with a great block, though. Durfee's doing a great job scrapping, cleaning up the glass. Those, those easy putbacks are key. Well, that second and third try is what was killing Durfee on Tuesday at Somerset. Defensively struggled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Raiders took advantage of those second and third chances tonight. You just saw Durfee do it. They've done it a couple times. A steal. They have men. Three on two. Oh, it's going to get in and out of the hands of Stewart. It was deflected. He was able to corral it. Ended up out of play after DeFaria touched it. So the Hilltoppers will keep possession. Right in the paint. Stewart, easy jumper, but a little too much on it. Bounces off the back of the iron. And Stevenson taking it back now. Cougars down 12-5. JV with a big win here moments ago, 80-38. to Freshman went down to the wire. They played Hendrickson, and um, they won it. I think it was a four-point game, 68, or 5.68, 63, something like that. Yep. And uh, so good night so far for the uh, freshman and JV teams. And now Varsity trying to finish off what would be a clean sweep of Friday night hoops. Good passing down to 10 seconds. Uh, back to Stevenson, who's at the emblem, calling the play. Five seconds on the shot clock. Almost lost it behind the back. That steps, and that is going to take it back. You know, and Evan, something we were talking about again early on is, you know, the, we were looking up, 35 seconds on the shot clock yeah. now. You know, up from 30. Yep. So plenty of time to, to get your play in and, and make something happen. But again, not sure what the thought uh, is there, but certainly gives a little bit more time to call some uh, plays. And there we are, another three. Offensive rebound. Yeah, Stewart getting it back, and they get it to Simmons, his second basket, and the lead up to nine. You know, that travel call there against Stevenson kind of saw uh, you know, LeBron James do the same thing the other night against the Celtics. Mm -hmm. But, you know, LeBron's in the NBA, and this is just high school ball. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here they count steps. That's right. <laughs> I watched uh, the end of the fourth, and because um, that was was that? that was Wednesday, right? So that Stewart to the hole. And there you see, I mean, good try to pick mm -hmm. up the charge, but, again, no control with the body there, and they get, uh, they get to Faria with a quick foul. So Stewart back to the line, 0 for 2. I, I was going to say the Lakers and Celtics. That was Wednesday night, I think. Mm -hmm. So I can't. I was. I didn't see a lot of the game because we had hockey, and um, and I ended up catching fourth quarter and the and overtime, which was great. Cause was a big comeback for the Seas, and you know the national guys because this this game was on. Uh, this wasn't local. It wasn't NBC Boston covering it. It was a national game. And they were right. The, the Lakers looked old. They looked slow. Like they had no legs by the end of the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, that's saying something when you talk about Davis and LeBron. I think people forget they're getting up there in age. Yep. They've been playing for so long. And, uh, oh, great Ooh. pass. Oh, it won't go. Will he get it, it back? Does. Yes, oh, he does. Oh, second. Ooh. Montilla with the second chance. He got his own rebound. That was beautiful pass. Selfless ball there from Stewart to get it to him. 
Yeah, Durfee Ooh. is really. Clocked in the nose, no foul. Coach DeCruz oh. wondering what's going on. Seriously, nothing at all. You kidding? Fast moving first quarter, 90 seconds left in it. Good Beautiful. drive to the basket, won't follow. And a whistle. Yep. Foul on the rebound. That one's gonna go against the Hilltoppers, their second. Montilla's first. Conley run their press break here. Good job breaking the press, down low. That's a Defaria. great pass down low. Defaria ready for it. Use the glass. A square's your best friend. Passing back out to Espinal. Stewart calling for it, wants it. Takes the three. In and out. The rebound to Stevenson as he'll... Look to transition quickly here under a minute in the first. Long three, he's already hit one. That's going to bounce. And the rebound to Stewart. Espinal can't hang on. They get kind of tangled up there. Both of them going for the ball. And neither coming away with it. And they got to reset the play clock here. The shot clock. There we go. 46.2. In this first, 40, uh, 35 on the shot clock here as we'll reset it. Stevenson getting the inbound pass to Souza. Now back to Stevenson it goes. DeFaria pulls up in the paint, tipped. Montilla with the block. Good defensive play right there. They get it to Espinal. Spin move in the paint, goes down, calls the travel. Lost his footing. That'll give the Cougars the last shot of the quarter. Down 10. You would think, right? Shot clock's off there. The differential there in that last possession, same thing. But here we go. Shot clock is off. Well, you know, the thing is, is when you, for me, is why rush the play when you know you can take the last shot? Don't right. give the other team another opportunity at points if you have the ability to run it out. And we see that very often where they press to try to do something and then you leave too much time. That's, oh, it won't go for DeFaria. Getting the rebound, though, is Denham. Fighting for it. Hilltoppers with a chance now. Two seconds. Stewart trying to go coast to coast, and he's going to draw the foul on the floor. It'll be Conley's fourth. I like that aggressiveness by Tay. Yeah. 1.2 left on the clock in the quarter. We'll see what they set up. Krinicki picking up his first. And 1.2. This has to be a you know catch and release here. Bang, bang, inbound, and to the basket. Can't waste time. That's not going to do anything. All right, well, not a bad first quarter for the Hilltoppers. They definitely left some points out there, but a 10-point lead after eight minutes. Not bad at all here in game three of the season for Durfee. And I think really the biggest thing is, you know, limiting Conley to just the three and then the one other basket from DeFaria. That's it from the field. So, I mean, defensively, they're, you know, quick to the ball. They're a lot faster than I anticipated. Yeah, I think Conley's looking to find somebody with a hot hand. You know, DeFaria down low or Krinicki outside. He gets hot and he can light up the scoreboard, sure. there, you know, with the best of anyone. So, you know, again, 10-point lead after one. If you're Durfee, you close the first quarter and you say, hey, you know, we'll take that because we played a, you know, a strong defensive quarter as well. You put 17 on the board. You know, hey, the old, the old saying is, is pretty clear. Win the quarter. Yeah, you exactly. win every quarter, you win the game. It's, a, it's pretty simple math, right? One yep. quarter in the books for the Hilltoppers. So 17-7 um, for Durfee. A couple points left out there. Stewart struggling at the free throw line early here. 0 for 4, and he's the only one who's gone to the free throw line. However, um, you know, he has a basket. Espinal with two threes, Montilla with two layups, and Jaleel Simmons with uh, a couple baskets. So they're spreading it out, which is good to see as well. Uh, that's going to be important to not just rely on one or two guys to get you points. You've got to get contributions from everybody. Yeah, you were saying early in the first quarter, you know, Coach DeCruz has, has really established his program over the years, right? He started right with the freshmen, and, uh, you know, the, a lot of these guys have played ball together for a long time, as, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but again, two, they, they lost two big cogs, a 1,000-point th scorer, 
Um, and I like listening to Joe's piece in the opening. You know, it's it's yeah. it's pretty much you got to be scrappy on defense. That 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 run in that last game and against Somerset, 21 to six. You know, was the differential when you lose by by five or six points, right? So, again tonight, I think the the game plan is simple, right? Go go go, build the lead and, and see where we uh, we end up, right? Again, so. Well, the good news is these guys have bought in. That's for sure. I think there's some trust there. You know, they know Coach DeCruz. It's not like he's new, right? He's not new to Durfee basketball. He's not new to the program. So that helps things, you know, tremendously. And uh, it'll be Conley getting the ball first here as Souza inbounds as we're underway here in the second quarter. A backdoor pass, a little too much mustard on that one. Just by Krinicki's outstretched hands, Durfee ball. Had to go and gather that one, rolled all the way to the bleachers at the end of the field house. And Stewart and Espinal, excuse me, uh, Mickey Sari, not Stewart. Stewart's, Stewart was down uh, already in the paint. So Sari into the game now, as is Chris Milfort. Mm -hmm. Back out to Stewart. Now to Sari. Ooh, that's a quick, that was a quick one right there. One tiny extra step. Oh, turnover for the Hilltoppers. Playing up again, pressing on defense early. Wow. Nice job, Sarah. Oh, he got him. Oh, he get, yep, I was just going to say good coverage, and now he's going to get called on it. Third team foul. Sarah's first. Again. Two quick fouls on mm. Sari. Oh, I mean, it, pretty much, you know, dead ball foul. Now notice, backing off a little bit. Yeah, oh, oh. And they got him again. Really? I mean, that's tough. You picked that's up. That's really. They, they blew the whistle on him three times in a matter of nine seconds. Yeah. Three fouls in nine seconds. Wow. One ex I've never seen that. I mean, listen. I really have never seen that. You go to the bench all, all fired up on that because, you, you know, you're trying to play aggressive defense. You're trying to be up on your man. Right. You're trying to stay in, in a shadow. You're literally shadow boxing with him, right, when, you, when you're playing defense there. And, and you, you punish for a couple. Oh, and, come and, on. And the whistles. Is, is the this, the whistles this, are just, you know, coming out right now. Is this what it's going to be? Here come the whistles. So that's four, four fouls in 15 seconds. Jeez. Parade of whistles. Let him play a little bit, guys. I, lo you know, I sure keep it, keep it well, a, a well, gentleman's game, but let him play. No foul down this end in the first quarter when, when one of the players, I think it was uh, Simmons, got clocked nose. in the nose. Nothing there, but these are ticky tack calls. We're only in the second quarter. I, I, I don't get it. Sometimes I just don't understand hole. it. That's There's a great take to the basket. Stevenson, great left hand to the hole. Heck of a player, that kid. Espinal with his third from downtown. Way to answer the call. They get two, you get three. We'll take, you know, you take the differential. It's like take your fouls. <laughs> that was then some. Krinicki, right back. And he gets one for three. He gets hot, he's dangerous. Krinicki has a tremendous eye for the hoop. And he had no points in that first quarter. So that's a big one right there for the Cougars. They get the three right back. Set for three that time long from Glover. Oh, that's a travel. Yep. yep. Kind of got knocked back a bit. Lost his footing due to some contact. And a timeout for Coach Shea. Just two minutes and two seconds into the second. Hilltoppers have to shake off those fouls. That you can't. That'll like get in their heads. You can't 
that was like one we went from one extreme to the next. I've never seen fouls like that unless they were intentional yeah. in the fourth quarter. I've never seen back to back to back to back like that. That's crazy. You hear Coach Jay directing traffic big time. Very animated. Always always has been very animated. Yeah. Um, Bill certainly brings, you know, a level of intensity that uh, is tough to match, certainly. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey. I, he knows he, the game. He definitely <laughs> knows the game. And the game, you know, and the players respect him well. And, yeah. you know. And again, here we got an eight-point game. You know, we're just about almost midway through quarter two, or two minutes in, actually. And, uh, you know, 20 to 12. Fouls are pretty much even, give or take one or two. We'll see what happens, because we, we are going to get to one-on-one -on -one soon. We'll be at the stripe and see, you know, that can always make a big difference in a quarter. Nice. Stolen by Espinal. Outstanding. And, you know, coming out of a timeout, that's that's big. That It means even more right there. Yeah. After, you know, a design play for the Cougars, and you just totally spoil it. That makes a coach oh, cringe. Close to backcourt. It does. And you should be, Coach Shea put his hands on his head like, come on, really? Very frustrating. Rebound to Espinal. Good reach there on the miss from Souza. And we'll go back the other way. Ten point lead again for Durfee. Close to Steps. Kept, kept that foot planted. That Steps. Yep. And there it is. Another travel. A lot of turnovers this quarter. Again, 22 to 12, 10 point game. I was just going to say, uh, that's that's one thing now is we're seeing We've seen a lot of turnovers in the early going here. The Hilltoppers have to do a better job at protecting, protecting the ball. Bad pass inbounds again. The Hilltoppers are going to come away with it, and then they turn it over themselves. That's a bad pass from Glover. Stevenson. Oh, and one. Yep. And one. Another foul. That's number seven for the Hilltoppers. It's going to put Conley at the line the rest of the way. That's kind of a careless foul right there. I mean, you know, you got a guy who's got steps on you, he's fast. You threw the ball away, just let him take the layup. You're up by 10, and it's only the second quarter. You don't need to reach in and try to slap the ball at that point. Again, that adrenaline kicks in. You know, you, you go right. to the ball, you, you, you're playing the ball, you're playing the man, and, and you end up committing the foul. So 22-15 now on the three-point swing for the Cougars. That's going to be off the rim from Avante Lamore. As Coach DeCruz getting the bench. Some of the non-starters. Some minutes here in the second. The only starters out there, Montilla and Espinal. Good ball movement. Kernicky. No good. Off. Kept in. Good reach there. Oh, Simmons is still in too. Oh. I, a little I, too much. Yeah, I missed him too. So just a couple guys out there, but I like what Coach DeCruz is doing. He's trying to work in some of the non-starters here with a lead, see what they can do, see how they can hold the lead. You know, this is the time, time in the season in non-conference play when you want to do that because... How do you know what you have down the stretch if you don't use them? Well, you gotta have, you gotta go nine, ten deep, right? You know, especially if you get to the tournament. Yeah. You know, you've been doing this a long time, Evan. You know, you, it's great to have a, a tremendous starting five, but you know, you gotta have that next, that that next rotation of players and then some ready to step up. You know. Oh yeah. You gotta be strong all the way down the bench, and that's that's where that teamwork comes in. There's where you know the essential work that they do in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys gotta know. You know when your number's called, what your role is, and be ready to get up there. You know whether you're in there for you know five minutes or you know the whole game. You, you got to know your role and be ready to, to uh, fulfill it. Again, though, we look up quick, Evan. We're back to a six-point game. Yeah, four-point swing for Conley. Dinham one for two at the line on the eighth team foul for Durfee. It was Milford who picked up his first foul in short time. He's on the bench now. Ben Sherry has checked in, and there is Sherry with it, number 15. Nice look. That was beautiful. Oh, textbook assist. Beautiful. Beautiful by Ben Sherry. I like that. Unselfish play. Could have uh -huh. gone up. He's like, you know what? Dish it away. Saw the same thing earlier with uh, Stewart giving it up to Montia as well. Same look. And there it is on the steal. Fast break. 
Calling a travel on a set and, on a set and release there. Didn't look like much there that time, at least not to me. I, it, you caught the ball, planted, and let it go. Turnover. Stevenson gets across center. He's going. Oh, nice. Oh, little jump Get, step. Give it up. Two on one. Pass down low to Lamori. Nice job. Two assists for Sherry and a steal in about a minute on the on the court. Not bad. <laughs> and right back to double digits. Yep. Ten point lead. Now a four point swing for the Hilltoppers. That's for three. Down in the corner, off the back of the rim. Stevenson comes away. With, was that Stevenson? Can't even see. No, that was uh, Dinham. Stevenson with it now. Wow, dual Jump possession. Ball. Yep. Hmm. Well, Durfee will have it. I thought that was steps, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So here we are, 2.42 to go here in the second quarter, and the Hilltoppers are exactly where they were at the end of the first quarter, up by 10. Could be 13. Oh, in and out it goes. That was a good look there. Right on the money, just spun out. Now a chance for Conley. Good take. It won't go either. That's flying down. Sliding was Krinicky. Baseline, inbounds, no good. I don't think people realize how tough of a shot that just was from Espinal. Oh, pardon me, Simmons, T to be able to go and be behind the glass and actually still put it on net. Out of bounds. Durfee to look, you know, looking to build on their 10 point lead as we approach halftime. Conley ball, Stevenson. Two minutes left in the first half. Three, oh, that's gonna be no good off the front of the rim. Put up there by Krinicky, passing, Lamori is there. Lamore providing a tremendous amount of energy and spark off the bench. Yeah, he's got four points in short time. That's no good either. Cougars throwing a lot of uh, nice long points. balls up here. Dinham able to get the put back for two and stop that run for the Hilltoppers. Dinham work, worked for that. He did. That stopped a six-point, six-nothing run there. Wow. wow. Oh, and it doesn't go. Love the razzle-dazzle take. That was Serious, beautiful. He, he like parted the Red Sea right there. <laughs> beautiful right take. No good. Another tough shot. No good. Third chance for the Cougars. A lot of contact down low. No of fouls. bodies down. No fouls. Oh, Coach Shea not happy at all. Seeing some frustration here. A lot of frantic play. Oh. That's a tough collision right there. Thankfully... Okay, that was scary. Come. Yeah, Sousa's legs taken out from under him. No foul. Oh, did they call the foul? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Should I was going to say, I know. How's that not a foul? Seriously. So that should be foul number nine for Durfee. DeMello into the game, and he's picked up the foul for Durfee. One and one. No shot. Lane violation. Shooting lane violation on Cougars. Derby ball. Well, that was a wild 60 seconds. Very frantic play by both sides. Sherry blocked. Nice job by Denham. Getting the hands in there. And he's calling for it. He was down low, but they don't pass across the court. Stevenson holding. He gets run into. Out of bounds. Derby ball. 
Shot clock's off. 29 seconds left in the half. Hilltoppers up 10. They've netted, both sides have netted 11 points in this quarter. See if the Hilltoppers hold for the last shot. Lucas back in. Latrell So into the game, number 20. Down to Sherry, might have been blocked. Loose ball. Who wants it? Durfee's gonna get it back, that's close to a travel. And now a foul. Thought Again, I thought that was steps. It looked like an extra step, the foot came up. Nine that's seconds. a big foul right there, because that's on Stevenson, it's his third. And it's Conley's first foul of the second quarter. Right. Everything else has been on Durfee over these last eight minutes. Five seconds. Put it up. Two seconds, that looks good. In and out. It was on the money, just a little too strong. Oh, the Hilltoppers up by 10 here at the half. 28 to 18. Not a bad first half, Jay. No, not definitely, a bad first half. You know, definitely things that can be done better for both sides, but uh, not a terrible first half. I like that Durfee's getting, you know, contributions here from both sides, you know, from, from, from a lot of the bench as well as we bring you up top here at the top of the bleachers and, uh, you know, wrap up this first half. But uh, I think, you know, for Durfee, I think the protection is what's needed. They're not protecting possession. Way too many turnovers on travels. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you can get away with that on, you know, against a lower division opponent, but down the road, that's not gonna work. So I think they really need to correct that as we you know, head into the locker rooms. I'm sure that's something that Coach DeCruz and Coach Shea are gonna both talk about to their teams. Well, I think, you know, again, a lot, of, a lot of sloppy play, both sides, bodies flying all over the place. Okay, we talked about momentum in a game, but we talked about that level of play, right? We know that the kids are amped up for this game. Oh, no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, you're up for every game, right? You're always <laughs> wanna, you always wanna excel, you always wanna play well. But again, this is Durfee Conley. These sure. are guys, you know, the, the meeting across the street of Papa Gino's having a pizza together, right? They know each other, <laughs> they see each other walk by, sure. right? But then, reality sets in, we're playing a game, and, and it, it, we had a little frantic play there for a while, right? Yeah. So again, big thing that, that we need to note, Stevenson picking up that third foul, um, and, and again, Conley, 18 points in the first half. Coach Shea's not going to be happy with that, yeah. right? You're not going to win a game with 18 points a half. Conversely, you know, what I think Coach DeCruz can hang his hat on is, yeah, hey, listen, we didn't play our best ball. You know, we didn't play our best half. No. But we're still up by 10. We, we were up 17-7, we're up 28-18. We're still held down to that 10-point that, that lead. They're going to come out, I think, you know, with, with Obviously, a lot more in the tank. Try to build that third quarter. If you're Durfee, if you're Conley, what's your goal? Well, you want to knock this down in half. You want to get to the fourth quarter, down five or six, stay within reach. Conley definitely can play with Durfee if, if their shots fall. Um, again, Durfee has played well at times, but again, they've also had a lot of shots that have, have back ironed or just haven't yeah. rolled in. So I look for a lot in the second half uh, from both teams, and we'll see where it ends up. All right, folks, we're going to step aside about seven minutes left before the players come back out, enjoy these feature pieces, and Jay and I will be back with the third quarter after this. More live coverage. Stay tuned. The school administration building at 417 Rock Street was built over 100 years ago by craftsmen from around the globe. And Mr. and Mrs. William Brennan, mill owners, raised their nine children in this statement home. Decades later, the property became too costly for a single family and was gifted to the Four River School District. Architects reconfigured the 22 rooms to accommodate administrative staff. By 2018, this historic structure was compromised, eliciting mold and water damage. Once dubbed the last big house on the hill, this extraordinary piece of architecture was in poor condition. Care was shown to restore artistic elements, including the circular railing and banister, chair rails, crown molding, antique and oak flooring. And the building is now handicap accessible. Roof work was the primary concern for the Brayton House. 
This new pitch surface directs water to a modernized drainage system. Ten years ago, four of our residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, diversity, and recreation. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Hi, I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. Welcome to the Lafayette Durfee House. I'm David Jennings, curator. Built in 1750, this is one of the best living history representations in Massachusetts. Judge Thomas Durfee, the original owner, was also an admired patriot. Judge Durfee made sizable purchases of equipment and weapons to outfit Revolutionary War soldiers, including his own son. Generals and Minutemen frequently met here for secret and strategic military planning. But by the 1970s, the home's significance was largely forgotten and it was slated for demolition. Preservationists rallied, first to fund the restoration and secondly to resurrect interest in the heroic Durfee family. The original frame and foundation are intact. Craftsmen worked tediously to repair or replace decorative elements. Visitors are encouraged to handle artifacts and work alongside artists. The Lafayette Durfee House is included in the National Register of Historic Buildings and exceeds standards of the Secretary of the Interior. However, time continuously ravages the one-of-a-kind structure. Grants from the Community Preservation Committee, as well as monetary contributions, spearhead the efforts of tireless volunteers. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Fall River is in the forefront of honoring members of the Armed Forces. The Community Preservation Act funded upgrades to the Veterans Memorial Bicentennial Park. In May 2021, Fall River dedicated the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, an 80% scale replica of the original. The aluminum panels are engraved with the names of more than 58,000 heroes killed or missing in action during the Vietnam War. The project, including landscaping, exceeds recreation and open space requirements set by the Community Preservation Act. Ten years ago, Fall River voters approved a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, and diversity. $310,000 was designated to build this powerful tribute, which has become a location for reflection and healing. The park is now fully handicap accessible and is open to all at no cost, dawn to dusk. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. The Gothic Revival style arch at Oak Grove Cemetery signals the final resting place of some of Fall River's most prominent residents. Since 1873, thousands of funeral processions have passed through these ornate iron gates. War heroes, abolitionists, mill owners, and Lizzie Borden are buried within these walls. Despite fine craftsmanship and historical recognition, the arch was unable to withstand time and the elements and was in danger of collapse. 10 years ago, Fall River residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills. This cherished landmark was saved with funds through the Community Preservation Act. In just five months, this time using some modern machinery, local contractors refurbished the granite arch and replaced sections of the gate. A uniquely Fall River work of art and a respectful reflection for the dead has been saved for future generations. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment.
tis the season of giving. The Fall River Traffic Department is giving you a discount through the annual ticket amnesty program. Starting December 1st, all late fees will be waived if you pay off your unpaid parking tickets during this five-week grace period, which ends January 6th. You may pay your balance in person with cash, money order, or credit card. No appointment is necessary. Or for contactless payment via money order, just call 508-324-2577 with your plate number handy to find out how much you owe. A secure drop-off box is available at the 3rd Street Government Center entrance. No personal checks will be accepted. Director of Traffic and Parking, Laura Ferreira, wants to remind everyone that having unpaid parking tickets will prevent you from renewing your driver's license and vehicle registration. Be sure to take advantage of this holiday gift from the Fall River Traffic Department. Welcome back, everybody, to the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud and Jay Correa with you on this Friday night. Final broadcast of 2022. Hilltoppers up 28 to 18 here. You just saw the uh, ticket amnesty PSA. So um, you don't live in Fall River. No, not anymore. That's what I thought. So basically the traffic department and uh, offers you know, a reprieve for unpaid tickets that are overdue and whatnot, parking tickets. And uh, so through the month of December, into like the first week of January. Basically, if you bring in any unpaid tickets, they waive all the fees. You pay just the base ticket if you've let them accumulate. Which, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, that if you have unpaid parking tickets, you can't renew your license or your registration. So they do this every year, and um, you still have to feed the meter all year, but they're trying to uh, help you out if, you're, if you've accumulated a few tickets and kind of let it slip. So, so that's kind of what that is. But now they don't even have meters. They, uh, the kiosks are downtown now. Um, they're moving away from the meters near City Hall. And we'll start off the second half with a whistle. Good old foul. It's against Durfee. Espinal picking up his first. We'll see how fouls play into this one again, especially with Stevenson, who's quite a playmaker. Stevenson with 10 points for the Cougars. They have 18 for the game. So he got more than half the team's points, but he's got three fouls coming into the second half. On the other side, Espinal has found the long ball. Three from downtown made, plus one field goal. He's got 11 for the game. The game high for both sides. And now a 12-point Durfee lead. And then a steal. And, and a steal. another hoop by Jaden Espinal. And is Espinal. Four quick points. Four quick points. Largest lead of the night for the Hilltoppers. It's 14 points. That's a great way to start it. Nice take to the oh, basket. Krinicky, Krinicky with a beautiful left-handed floater. Stops that mini Durfee run quick. Mm -hmm. Long three, corner no good. I don't mind the long three being open, but you just, you, you just nailed down four quick points in the paint. Go back to what's working. Go right back mm -hmm. to the paint. Yeah, no, 100%, uh, and there goes, there's the four point swing. Krinicky so Krinicky. with the roll. So four straight now for the Cougars. We're back to 10. Little dabble do you off the front rim. You bring up a good point, though, is, you know, we, you know, everybody wants to hit the threes, and then you start throwing up bricks. There's another one. That's out of bounds and a turnover. So it's two straight possessions you just gave up after what you said. You're making the basket underneath. Why are you changing it up? Listen, you know Durfee can shoot outside, no doubt about right. it. Right. But you're, you're dominating the offensive glass. Keep going. Got a couple of quick steals. Go back to it. Oh, nice steal. And they did get the steal. Lucas coming away with it. Passing tipped out of bounds. It'll still be Durfee ball. And a timeout. And Evan, here we are almost two minutes into that third quarter. And you look up at the scoreboard and where are we? <laughs> We're still at that 10 point margin, That's right? That's right. It's been the theme of the night. <laughs> So Coach Shea using his third timeout of the game. He's used one now in every quarter. Durfee has not burned one. Um, but Coach Shea calling this. This is the earliest he's called one yet. Just, uh, what, 99 seconds into the third quarter. And I don't mind that so much. You know, you want to make sure, you know, you, you had a couple of Durfee tremendous plays early on in the third quarter. Conley right back. 
you, you know, you see it maybe, again, I don't want to call it sloppy play. It's aggressive play. But again, which team is going to step up and, and take control of the game? That's what I'm waiting to see. I'm seeing a lot of back and forth again. Yeah. Great with this rivalry. But who's going to step up and just, you know, break away or run away with the game? Yeah, Let's we really haven't seen that yet. We nope. We saw a six-point run for a six nothing run for the Cougars and that's what cut it back to uh, uh, the six point game that it was or a four point game. No six, you're right it was a six point yeah, game. Six point game and then Durfee went on a run again got it back to the ten and uh, you know, Conley they feel like they're in it but they're not. I guess that's what I'm trying to say and I don't mean that as a slight but it, you know every time they creep a little closer Durfee ends up with an answer for it. I guess it's, it doesn't feel Ten points is nothing no. to come up with, you know, with a quarter and a half to play. But it, it feels like it, it's 20 points. And maybe it's because we've seen so much. We've seen a lot of frantic play lately. It seems like it's gotten more frantic. That's beautiful passing. And Espinall up to 15 points. But my, I guess my point is, is that the consistency with shooting and ball possession has made it feel kind of broken a little bit. Yeah, I agree. They got it. Conley's got to get somebody going. The hot hand. Yeah, well, they got some numbers there before Durfee crashed the boards and the paint. And they give it up again. Another bad Three possession. Stewart, that's a travel. Two chances of layup. That doesn't go. And Coach DeCruz won't be too pleased with that either. Body. With the body. Number five, Lucas going to pick up the foul on that. Lucas picking up his second foul. Team's second as well. Oh, good pass down low. Stewart, tight defense. Everybody playing in the paint, jammed up, and the Hilltoppers steal it away. That's going to be a foul. Look Wait like. Yeah, away from the ball. Uh, another situation where I'm seeing steps. I don't know about you, but it, it, some of these can go either way. Contact at the top of the elbow. Yeah. I mean, coin flip there, foul or foul, a foul or, or, or travel. That is just Conley's second foul since the first quarter. It's Krinicki's second foul. Basket no good, and Montilla with the rebound. Tough rebound, comes away with it. Lucas gets the pass. They feed it to Simmons, back to Lucas. Good kick out, and it's going to bounce hard off the rim. Stewart with the extension, getting the rebound. Back to Lucas, give it another go, and he's got it for three. Always like those open looks at the top of the three-point line, you know, behind the free throw line. That nice straight-on three-point look. On oh, a steal, transition up. And out, and offensive glass, Evan. <laughs> and a false start from Gomzy on the PA. <laughs> it won't go. Who wants it? Five Foul. offensive rebounds there. I'm Seriously. <laughs> wow. That's working. You're working for you. You know, you work for your points. I well, love it. I I'll tell you right now, one thing I can tell you is that Durfee's already got nine points this quarter. We're not halfway through it. It's Stevenson's fourth foul on that crazy Crazy sequence right there. Stewart will go to the line. Um, 10 points this quarter now for Durfee. Stewart's first free throw made. But the defense for Durfee is at another level from the but, first half. Absolutely. But what I think Coach Shea is seeing is that, you know, he's got to leave Stevenson in. Right? Yeah. I mean, this is a 16-point game now. Durfee's on a run. Again, the entire entire paradigm and momentum of the game has shifted to Durfee. You know, this, the, the 10 is gone. Now that they're pushing 20. Yeah. Durfee up 39-22. Four minutes and 26 ticks here in the in the third quarter. I mean, okay, quick foul, but again, when you when when you look at Durfee right now, again outscoring Conley 11 to four so far in this quarter. Mm -hmm. um, again, now you're at the point where, you know, you you try to put the game out of reach. I agree. Yeah, this this is the time. You you finally broke free a bit. It's a 17 point advantage. And you're right, Coach Shea knows he's got to keep Stevenson in. Stevenson is super fast, talented player. Look at this take. To, oh, and the block 
is going to draw a foul, though. Durfee's fourth foul. Espinal's second. Both coming in this quarter. Mm -hmm. Great free throw shooter. Oh, we got a tech. I'll back everybody up. <sighs> that just really frustrates me to no end. You're up by 17. You go into the line for simple free throws. And you, you Don't giving, talk. You're giving Stevenson four, four, <sighs> four free throws, you know? You know. The two techs and the two on the foul. And again, as I mentioned before, tremendous, tremendous free throw shooter. And he hasn't missed. Five for five. And did, did they get the ball as well? Yeah. Right after the tap. Yep. What are you talking for? Four for four at the line in that trip. And the ball. Seven for seven on the night. 14 points for Stevenson. And as you said, Jay, possession as well. 13 points, the lead for Durfee. Just as they're pulling away, <laughs> pulling back in. It'll be a 10 point game before you know it. <laughs> Again, theme of the night. Yep. Turn up the heat, turn up the D. Now is where you need a strong defensive possession if you're Durfee. Oh, almost lost it. Good job to step in there. So the heart of eight lines going for the ball there, right? <laughs> Everybody wanted it. Wow. And I like how the refs step in there. You don't want to see anybody get hurt diving for a loose ball. They tied it up. They so, oh, so they called a dual possession. They never really gave the signal, but it was a dual possession, and Durfee ends up getting it thanks to the arrow. And there's what they Woo! needed. There's a the strong take by Simmons to the hoop. Up and in. Long pass. Paint, great take on the other end. Denham driving. I'll tell you, the Friday Night Marquee matchup has not disappointed, though. <laughs> it has not. It's been a good game. Third quarter's been very exciting. High pass. Stewart reels it in. Down low to Montilla. Nice touch. Nice touch. Soft finger roll there off the front of the fingers and in. Double figures for Alexis. He's got 10 points in the game. All field goals. Stevenson. Oh, man. Look at the touch on that. Yep. Rolling it in. It's tough. Tough, tough Stevenson. And right back. Right back. Lucas right back with the answer. Lucas up to five points. Stevenson now up to 16. The game high. Back Two and, and a forth. half to play in the third. And as you said, absolutely back and forth. And that's where, like, you know, we talk, I was saying about kind of that broken inconsistency a bit. Of course, it's early in the season. But, um, you know, we see shades of brilliance here. Three straight, four straight possessions with both sides making plays, getting good baskets. But then we have that franticness, if that's even really... A word. It is. It is tonight. <laughs> you coined it. It's tonight. You coined it. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff um, that. That's something you put on a sticker for, of a kid's paper, <laughs> right? That, yeah. We'll put that on your paper. I used to love getting. Didn't you love getting stickers as a kid, too? Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know uh, where that, that came from, but you brought it, so I finished it. That's how they used to describe my handwriting. <laughs> 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 not, they, not anymore. It's gotten a lot better. <laughs> Evan, don't look now, but it looks like, you know, the entire fourth quarter could be where both teams, you know, may end up shooting probably with, you know, a few minutes in. Here we, yeah. we sit and we look at 16 fouls to three. Um, and, again, we're at a 14-point game. Yep. Six to three. Durfee with six already. And there we go. Thrown away. There goes Krinicky. Two on one. Stevenson is there. Krinicky going to take it himself, and he gets it to go. And guess what? The lead is 12. 
Krenicki with a seven point third quarter. He's got 10 for the night. Another steal. Another steal. Well, the Cougars giving the Hilltoppers a dose of what Durfee was giving them in the first part of this quarter. Trying to close the gap. And Stevenson, the basket's gonna count. I'll tell you, Conley is giving Durfee all they can handle tonight. At times, mm -hmm. Durfee has looked brilliant. And then Conley goes on a run. And that, you know, the, again, 10 point game, Stevenson step into the line, he hasn't missed, correct? He has not missed. So looking to cut it back to single digits. Seven for seven. Eight for eight. And it's a nine point lead for Durfee. And Lucas sitting with five, fo uh, four fouls for Durfee. Impressive at the line, Stevenson. Impressive all around. Lucas no longer in the game. Lamore has checked in, number 10. Quick three, this would be big, it's short. The rebound to Stewart. They'll get it right back to Simmons. No good. Montia can't get it to go. Stevenson will take it back. 75 seconds to play in the third. Cougars down just nine. Loose ball. Stevenson picks it up. Double teamed. Hands up, Pesuza wants the ball, doesn't get it yet. Eight seconds on the shot clock, Stevenson down, loses it. And a drive to the basket, and the foul will send Simmons to the line for the first time tonight. It'll be Conley's third foul. They're trying to draw the charge there. I like the idea, like the effort, just didn't have the feet established again. Credit to Durfee for being aggressive and attacking the rim. Foul on Denham. Hilltoppers only had six free throws to this point. All six were to Stewart. And that one misses for, uh, for Simmons. Hilltoppers just two for seven at the line. And with that make, Evan, we are back to that 10-point margin, 51 seconds to go in the third quarter. 46-36. Stevenson's eight free throws made is keeping the Cougars in this game. As Durfee has left, five points out on the floor just from that. Long three, no good. And we got about a three-second differential in the shot clock to the game clock, but they're going to take it anyway. Simmons is going to go back to the free throw line on what will be Conley's fifth foul of the night, of the half. This is Souza's first. As I stated, I think we're gonna be shooting you know, both ways pretty oh, much yeah. most of the fourth quarter. Which is unfortunate because it, it, it really breaks up the pace of play when you're constantly stopping for free throws, but it's part of the Part of the game. I think you and I should go out and shoot 10 free throws. <laughs> I think I can make four, maybe five. It's about four more than I can make, so. <laughs> I don't think it's anything to brag about. I know one person I won't be shooting free throws against, and that's Stevenson from Conley. <laughs> oh, backcourt. Oh, out of bounds. No, he didn't go out of bounds. One possession. I did not see a foot go out of bounds. But I do think he went back court. Instead Three. it's Tay. Woo. That's big. That's big. That is huge. Stewart with the long ball. And the lead is back to 15 in the blink of an eye. That's a tough foul. Clearly a foul, but that's a tough foul. Collision, not intentional. Let me jerk he's eighth. Should be Durfee's eighth. Did they call it a foul? They yeah, did. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Lamore in limited time picking up his first foul. It's going to put Souza at the free throw line. He was at the line on the uh, lane violation, so his one and one did not count. 
earlier in this game. That was in the second quarter. And this one and one will count. The first one good. Six point eight seconds on the clock. You think Coach DeCruz calls a timeout, get the ball uh, no. off the court a bit, or are they just gonna play it? No, they're gonna play it. Fast enough to get up there. Two seconds, Lucas, oh, that was close to a travel. At the buzzer, no good. Well, Conley cut it back, and Durfee pulled further ahead on the la in the last minute there. Two free throws and a three ball in what was the highest scoring quarter uh, for either side. Conley with 20 points, and uh, Durfee with 23, 23 right? points, yep. yeah. So highly productive quarter for both sides. And uh, the biggest thing though for Durfee is they actually upped their lead. So that's gonna feel good coming out of the half. You know, you had those first four points right away. So that was a great way to start the second half. Especially after not ha especially not having the uh, the ball to start it, right? You know, Conley had the possession. I mean, I'll state the obvious, but the first three minutes of this fourth quarter are going to determine the game, right? So oh, yeah. The big advantage for Conley, even though they're down 13, is their free throw shooting has been excellent, right? It has. And Durfee's getting to the point where it's going to be a double bonus. So Durfee's got 18 fouls. And, and yeah, you know, we know there were a couple of... Uh, Ticky tack fouls early on in the game. But again, Durfee, continue that, that in-your-face defense. Don't change a thing. Keep playing with that aggressiveness. You built your lead. You gained three more in the third quarter. You know, you don't change anything at this point no. if you're Durfee. You keep going to the hole hard. You keep playing, you know, uh, picking up ball, picking up man. And you, know, and, and you go with it. Yeah, I, and I mean, you know, the... You mentioned about some of the fouls. I mean, that sequence there with Sari, the three straight and then the one extra right after he left the game again, that was probably the craziest sequence I've ever seen for fouls. Has he been back in the game since then? No. And the three quick fouls, right. 19 points for Stevenson coming into this fourth and final quarter. He leads all scorers. Espinal was 15 uh, for Durfee and 10 for Montia. As we are underway here in the fourth, Thir Hilltoppers up 13. And looking to get back above 500 in the early goings of the season. Ooh. Oh, off the scoreboard. Man, we've seen some pretty ugly collisions tonight. I mean, I'm like glad dangerous. Everybody's getting up yeah, and seriously. Safe. I mean, and some nights this could be serious injury. That'll scare you. 10 points for uh, Krinicki as well. He had seven in the third quarter alone, so he's heated up in the second half. See if he can continue for Conley here in this quarter. The top, the five starters are the five with points. We've seen a couple subs, um, but basically the same five have been in this game. Nice shot. DeFaria with his first basket since the first quarter. That was his only basket. Down in the corner, open for Lamar. Lamar has, oh is that the, yeah, Lamar has been impressive. His minutes have been so meaningful. Yep. And I remember we talked about that, that role, right? What's your role coming in? Sure. Get the hot hand, keep shooting. Shoot to shoot, right? Keep shooting that ball. Well, and that's what they gotta do because we talked about the free throws. Durfee struggled at the line. So you gotta make the shots when you have possession because we know that uh, the Cougars can shoot from the line. They've only missed two shots That's all right. game. And they will not go away. Durfee has a, has a big shot. Conley has that answer. Durfee's trying to pull away, get that up to 15, 18, getting that little more comfortable range. And Conley's saying, no, we're not ready for that. Oh, long three, and it's going to be no good. Stewart, I believe, had the rebound. Then he Did. lost it. Now everybody crashing on, crashing on the baseline. Stevenson coming away with it. Quick three on the far side. It's good from Krenicki. They keep knocking on the door. <laughs> they they do. keep knocking on the door. And Durfee wants to slam it shut. And they Conley is still at the front door. I'd really like to see. And there he is again. I mean, you know. There he is again. You cannot say enough about 
Mr. Lamar tonight. He has been, I'm here, give yep. me the ball, <laughs> let me get it done. <laughs> Lamar with nine points off the bench. What a great job tonight for him. He's been the spark. Well, the official knew the, one official didn't see it, the one who blew the whistle, needed some help. It'll be Durfee's ball. Now, 11 point lead. You got 35 second shot clocks now. Why not slow it down a little bit, huh? It's a thought, right? I mean, you have the ability to take half a minute off the clock every possession now. More than half a minute. What do you see the Celtics do coming up, up coming up the oh, court a lot, well, right? Yeah, well, you know. They're getting paid though, so. Yeah, true. <laughs> Every point, every point is a couple dollars, right? But, but I'm saying, a you know, hundred. <laughs> to speak to your point of the shot clock, right? You're right. 35 seconds. The timeout coming? Yeah. Yeah, timeout. Sixth team foul for Conley. It was against Jaden Souza. And so, Conley just one foul away from putting Durfee into bonus. What do we have? How many points for Lamar right now? Lamar? Lamore, Avante Lamore. Avante Lamore, ten, uh, he's got nine points all off the bench. Every single one of his points just seems to me to be like so important, so crucial at the right time. Yeah, no, that's that's the whole thing, you're right. They were, they were when you needed a basket. Not just, oh great, you know, we got a layup. They were like meaningful baskets. So he has uh, three field goals and one from, th one from downtown. DECA had uh, tonight, the DECA club, or the students who are part of DECA, I should say, had a, uh, a raffle tonight. So that's what you're hearing over the PA. And uh, good night to do a raffle. A lot of people here. <laughs> good crowd. Five thirty-one to play in the game. Conley's next action will be at Dartmouth. Next Tuesday, they do have a game next Tuesday before the vacation. And then they resume at Joseph Case on Wednesday, January 4th. They don't come home again until Bishop Stang on January 10th. So wow. it's going to be a while away from the LaFrance Gymnasium. But that starts a five-game homestand. Takes them all the way through the 23rd of January. So once they're home, they're home for a while. Durfee, of course, after tonight, Durfee's done um, until... The Skip Carum tournament, which happens right after uh, Christmas, before New Year's. And then Durfee's back home January 3rd and January 6th. Braintree and Brockton in the house Friday the 6th. We will be here live for the boxers. Basket was good. Who was at the line, Jay? Did you catch? I was reading the schedules here. I believe it was Devante. It was Devante. That's what I thought. I got him down one for two on the line. So 57 45, three looks good and it's good. It is Krinicky. His third from downtown. He's got 16 points. But saying it all game, Evan. When that kid heats up, he's tough. Only a sophomore as well. He's got a great look. He's got a good, good presence on the court. Ooh, steps. Yep. 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 So a nine point game after the three and now a turnover. Haven't seen too many travels in the second half from Durfee. There were a lot of travels in the first half. They've limited that, but this one costly. And again, Conley's cut into the lead, right? It was a 13 point lead at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Here we are, nine point game. And we mentioned right at the beginning of the quarter how that foul trouble could plague Durfee a little bit, right? Because Conley's only two away from double bonus. Yeah. So we're gonna see how that plays out. Stevenson still sitting with four fouls. Krinicky looking to fire. Nice job. That was beautiful. We Giving it off to Denham. Yep, we haven't been this close in a long time. Down no. to seven. Hilltoppers. Durfee needs a hoop. <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth. Three ball, And there good. it is. Lamar! There's Lamar. Where's Lamar? Where's Lamar? <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Give me some more, says Lamar. <laughs> Give me the ball. <laughs> Back to a 10-point game. And Lamar with 12 on the night. Second highest on the team. Tipped, right? I believe so. Tipped by Durfee, though. 
it is still going to be Conley ball. So no backcourt there. And Lamore out of the game. Surprising move. Lucas going back in with four fouls. Lamore's been a spark. He's got eight points in this quarter. He's the only one who's shot from the field. That's, that's a surprising change. Stevenson for three. Might have been deflected. It went wide left. Kind of pinned up against the glass. And exactly your point, Jay. Slow it down. Under four minutes to go. You're up by ten again. Don't make any mistakes. Careless shots. Make it count. No need to rush it. No offensive foul. Yep. That's against Montilla. Those player controls will get you. And again, doesn't count for free throws, but it's still that ninth, uh, ninth team foul. Yeah. But we are back at that 10 margin. Got to use the clock a little bit. I have to say, all in all, it's been actually a pretty quick moving game. Phenomenal game. I mean, despite all the fouls and stoppages, with, because of that, I mean, it's only 8.02. This game started around quarter of seven, so we've only been going an hour and 15 minutes. That's pretty quick. We've been here for some games that went two hours. Oh! Out of bounds. I think Stevenson was hoping for a foul there because it looked like he kind of mm -hmm. might have taken an elbow the way his head jerked back. Kindly all full, full court press coming here. Oh, yeah. Mm, Durfee gets it in without any incident. Yeah, they did. Great job. Tipped and blocked, taken away. Speed, Denham, hands it off. It. Starter stepped down low by Krinicki. Planted twice. Corner, Stewart. Tipped. Yeah, I definitely think it was tipped. That just died, come out of his hands. Matia there for the third putback. He's got 12. Three Hilltoppers into double figures. Simmons sitting with nine. Thrown away. And here is Simmons. Can he get to 11 points? He is blocked. Stevenson did his job. And it's taken back the other way. Now Stewart with the steal. Simmons wants it again. And it won't go. Out of bounds. Durfee will keep it. Money shots right there, Jay. You gotta have those. Open layup, kiss it off the glass. Gotta have that. At least Durfee's gonna keep possession here. And Lamore back into the game. Simmons heading to the bench. Got a nice clap from his teammates. Likely done. We'll see. And Durfee gives it up. Now Stewart gets it back. Lamore. This would be his third. Oh from my goodness. Oh my goodness, fork and knife, feed me. <laughs> feed me more. <laughs> Ryback from the WWE. Unreal. Feed me more, says Lamar. Good block down low. Old school. Krinicky getting it back down to Denham. They give it to Stevenson, and that will fall. And Stevenson's up to 21 points. It's just his first points of this fourth quarter. Durfee has limited what he could do offensively here in the fourth. But how about Lamar? Three threes this quarter, 11 points, 15 for the game. Tied with Espinal, who has none this quarter for game high, team high, I should say, for Durfee. I remember the old Bugs Crazy. Bunny cartoon, you know, Bugs Bunny second base, Bugs Bunny shortstop, Avante Lamar in the corner, Avante Lamar <laughs> in the key, Avante Lamar up. <laughs> He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He really is. Uh, looks like we got ourselves a timeout. I'm not sure who called it. Everybody was kind of lackadaisical, you know, leaving the court, but nonetheless, a timeout here. Well, folks, on uh, Fred TV, the next time we will be here bringing you sports, live sports, that is. Looking at Friday, January 6th, boys basketball. Brockton coming to the field house, and then the next day, Saturday the 7th, uh, hockey from Driscoll, Blue Hills coming in. That's a four o'clock game. We'll be live over across the way at the rink for Mayflower Conference ice hockey. As you know, we usually 
are kind of shut down during the Christmas break, the holiday break. That's really the only time we do. February break, we're usually going because his playoff pushes, you know, and, and whatnot, senior night games and spring vacation, a lot of end of year stuff that gets scheduled. So the holidays here is really the only time we pretty much shut down. But uh, you get a little reprieve, you get a break. Yeah, we do get a little break. Wow. Yeah. So um, the Skip Karam tournament, of course, oh, that's always a lot is fun, going right? on. So the foul was on Krenicki. That was the there was a timeout after that foul. It was the seventh foul. So the one and one from Montia is no good. It's going to Conley. And yep. now it's going to go to Conley here. Um, yeah, so we'll be pretty much shut down. And, um, but I encourage everybody, you know, come out and fill this place for the Skip Karam tournament. Usually some great basketball played over those two nights. Breaking Lamore for the team high. Got it. Two points. Just a monster fourth quarter. A monster game off the bench. 17 points on the night. Stevenson from way Ooh. outside. Hello, everybody. I'm still here. And there he is. 24 points. Lamore answers. Oh, my gosh. You Mia kidding? Moore. <laughs> Mia Moore. Avante Lamore. You Unbelievable. Kidding? Are you he, kidding? He is just, oh, and here he is again on the steal and the harm. Oh, somebody put a cape on that man. Give him a cape. We've met Superman tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fall River Zone, Tommy Heinsohn, Jay Correa in the house. <laughs> and guess who's got the ball? Number 10. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Lamore. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I Heart have, and soul night to night. I have not seen a player go off like this off the bench in years. Take a bow. Take a bow. You deserve it. 74, 57, wow. 15 seconds to play. There he is. 20 Deflection. point. 20 point fourth Classy. quarter for Lamore. Pull it out. Three, six, nine, 12. Classy. Two, four, six, eight, plus four before. 24 points for Lamore. And a big win for the Hilltoppers. They needed a spark. They got it. Player of your game, without a doubt, Avanti Lamore. Unbelievable. And that, you know, the fourth quarter out overshadowed what Stevenson did basically the whole game. Because Durfee shut down Stevenson in the fourth. He did finish with 24 of his own. But unbelievable, the performance by Lamore, who was not a starter. Yeah, absolutely. And how about, you know, on top of Lamore, how about a 46-point second half for the Hilltoppers? Yes, yeah, that's huge. That's closing it out. Wow. They, they fixed the problems they had in the first half, and they clearly were ready to go coming out of the locker room for the third quarter. And Evan, only to be out, outshined. I mean, Conley also put up 39 points they in the did. second half. You know, take nothing away from Conley. No. You know, again, Durfee, what a tremendous second half, what an effort, you know, what a stalwart performance from Lamore. But again, Conley, hold your heads up high. Yeah. Hold your heads up high because, again, Krinicky heated up. Krinicky started to, to put points on the board. As we know, he can get hot with the best of anybody. We saw Stevenson, you know, you know, hammering him down. We saw some unbelievable play from Denim and DeFaria, Souza too. But, you know, Conley can go across the street knowing, hey, we, we put in a tremendous effort, but yeah. we ran into, you know, a, a roadblock tonight. <laughs> and that roadblock, ladies and gentlemen, Avante Lamar. Yeah, no, 100%. Conley can compete, there's no doubt. They dug themselves a bit of a hole, kind of similar to what Durfee did to themselves on Tuesday against Somerset. The difference was Durfee closed it out tonight. Somerset didn't close it out and almost let Durfee back in. Tonight, Durfee closed it out on Conley. Well, what a fun one to watch. Great way to close out the calendar year. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank our great crew behind the scenes, made up of current students, former students, staff, Guests like yourself, Jay, who joined me, Brendan Kelly, BJ McDonald, amongst others, 
Um, you know, can't do these broadcasts alone. And uh, thanks to the crew, the teamwork, the rigorous schedule, we can proudly say that we cover more local sports here on Fred TV than any other local channel within, say, 30 miles. And that's something we're very proud of. Um, so I, I want to say thanks to everybody, and I want to wish everybody out there a happy and healthy holiday. You know, we celebrate Christmas in my house, so Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah next week, uh, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, anything that I'm missing. I wish everybody nothing but the best, and we look forward to seeing you in 2023. So for the camera crew tonight, Mike Fernandes and Aiden Ferreira, my broadcast partner, Jay Correa, happy holidays and so long from Durfee. See you in two weeks.